Welcome to Flash Fiction from Giant's Reach by Steve Cook. It's been a, a mad week here, and uh, unfortunately I haven't had time to sit at the keyboard pretty much all week. But um, here's one uh, again from the archives. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Hero You had to do it, panted Lisa, poor scrabbling as they sprinted through the cave. Had to! Cora shook her head, too out of breath to respond, and the two squirrels skidded around a corner into a more open cavern, tails bouncing. Wait, Lisa said, slowing to a stop. I can't hear them behind us any more. Her ears twitched as she sat up on her back legs and sniffed the air. It was damp in the cavern, and cold enough that their panting breaths clouded out as mist. I'm sorry, Cora said as soon as she was able. Oh, you're sorry, Lisa snapped. I'm sorry. Sorry that I ever decided to come down here. The older squirrel cocked her head to one side. There, smell that. They're coming. Far enough away that we can get out of here, though, probably. Cora bared her teeth. How was I supposed to know? These caverns are supposed to be empty. Clearly not as empty as we thought, Lisa replied. God damn, Cora. The council aren't going to be happy about this. Giant rats this close to the city? We'll have to call this in and admit that we came down here. Broke in, no less. The overseer is going to be furious. All right, all right. I already told you I'm sorry. Cora looked around. Where are we, anyway? I don't recognise this bit. Lisa turned slowly around, then spat a curse. Must have taken a wrong turn. Can you see a way out? The cavern they were in was dimly lit by long crystals hanging down from the ceiling, glowing with a faint yellow light. To the right, the wall curved gently up to the ceiling, while to the left, the ground extended into darkness. Cora began to walk in that direction, her night sight picking up everything in shades of grey, until she reached the far wall. She ran a trembling paw over its smooth surface. It was blank, apart from the bands of alternating shades that showed its incredible age. No way out, she murmured. Lisa, I think we might have a problem. In the distance, the sound of the approaching rat horde was getting louder and Cora darted back to Lisa's side. What can we do? If we can get past them, we can retrace our steps, Lisa said. This is a big space. Maybe we can... Hey, what are you doing? Cora started running towards the tunnel opening. Get ready then, she shouted back. I'll run them around the edge, try and double them back. No! Lisa started towards her. Now is not the time to be a hero. I got us into this, Cora muttered as the sound of the rats and their fetid stink boiled out of the tunnel. I'll get us out. Then the rats were there. Eight feet long, with tails as thick as a human's arm, they surged into the chamber, clambering over each other. Their scabrous fur hung in bald patches, whiskers bent at crazy angles, and their greyish mass plugged the tunnel completely. Cora began to run. She flashed across the rocky ground in front of the tunnel, hardly daring to look at them, and ran around the very edge of the chamber. Behind her, she could hear the rattle of their claws and the grunting squeaks the rats gave out with every step. She snatched a look over to the centre of the cavern, where Lisa was still standing. Lisa, run! The squirrel took one look at the long line of rats following Cora and bolted for the tunnel, now empty. Cora carried on around the curve of the cavern, pushing everything out of her head except the icy knife of her breathing, the aching of her legs. She felt something grab at her tail and looked back to see a rat reaching out. It stumbled, fell, and was immediately trampled by its fellows. Cora found a burst of speed from somewhere and kept running. Ahead, she could see the tunnel entrance coming up, Lisa waving at her. Go! Cora panted. Why aren't you going? I found the tunnel! Lisa called back. There's a big rock we can use to block it. Come on! She bounded away down the tunnel and Cora followed, the column of rats roaring in to fill the space behind her. Fifty feet ahead, 
Liz had darted to the side, and as Cora rounded the corner, she saw that the older squirrel was already shoving at a large, rounded boulder. I can't move it. Oh! The boulder pivoted abruptly, almost blocking the tunnel, and Cora leapt for the closing gap. She felt, more than heard, the rock slam into place a fraction of an inch behind her tail as she flew between the rock and the wall, then fell into an uncontrolled roll. She came to a stop and dizzily raised her head. Did we do it? Lisa was leaning on the rock behind which they could hear the howling of the rat horde. It diminished as the rats moved on. For now, Lisa said. You've been listening to Flash Fiction written for my Patreon, Giant's Reach. If you'd like to become a supporter, go to patreon.com forward slash Giant's Reach, where you can find more fiction just like this, 